In this lecture, we're gonna be learning about line and its importance. So like I said before, line is the building block or the foundation of our drawing fundamental pyramid. It's the most important part and that's because everything is made up of line fundamentally. So let me give you an example. Sometimes you have a line in your painting or your image that you can't actually see. So for example, on the nose, I'll just draw a quick example. Select black. If this is our nose, this line right here is probably not going to actually exist in our painting. If we have our eyes like that, I know this is a pretty terrible drawing, but if we have our eyes like that, this line right here is not going to actually exist. It's going to more exist in your head or um, it's going to be created with two different colors. So this part of the nose right here might be a different color and this part over here might be a different color on the cheekbone, but it's not actually going to be a dark line drawn right there. It might also exist in a difference of values. So this area right here might be darker and this cheekbone area over here might be a different color or a different value. So that's what I mean by some lines aren't actually visible. They're created with other methods other than drawing an actual physical line. Yet you need to have the understanding of that line being there. And that's why line is so important. So let's just start drawing some lines. So whatever program you're in, I want you to just select a brush and we're just gonna practice drawing some lines. So for example, we're gonna get some straight lines. Now when you're drawing a straight line, what you wanna do is you just want to push down and very quickly drag across your canvas. You don't wanna go really slow and push too hard. If you push too hard, it's gonna come out kind of jittery like that. So you wanna make sure that you're just quickly swiping across your screen to draw these straight lines. Um, and you can add a little bit of pressure to thicken it up with your pressure sensitivity. But like I said, just the biggest thing is just make sure you're just moving quick in one straight swoop. So practice some straight lines like that. Now we also get other lines in our drawing. So for example, we'll get a curved line like that. We can get a curved line going the other way. Um, let's practice a few of those. Just getting a nice fluid movement. Like you can see right there that I got that kind of bending off piece. We want to try to avoid stuff like that. If, if we're drawing a curved line, we want it to be nice and curved. So we want it, our hand and wrist to continue that motion all the way through in a nice, nice curved motion. Now we can also get things like pointy lines like this or we can get zigzag lines like that, or lightning bolts. Um, and we can also take lines and we can create shapes. So if we connect them like that, you can see that we can get all kinds of shapes. Or we can just connect some straight lines and create something like a square. Now let's talk about line quality. Because we're going to be working digitally, line quality is a little bit different than if you're working with a physical paper and pencil or an actual paintbrush. So when you're working digitally, you'll probably notice that while you're using your tablet of some sort, that when you push harder, it becomes thicker, and when you push lighter, it becomes thinner. Now, if it's not doing that, it's probably because whatever software you're using, you need to go into the settings and change the pressure sensitivity, but it should be doing this. So you can see right here, I'm not pushing very hard, and then it gets thicker like that. I'm gonna go ahead and add a new layer by coming down here to this little layer icon if you're in Photoshop, and just add that in. And then I'm just going to use a paint bucket, and I'm gonna fill that in with a white, just so we have a new background to work on. So now I'll switch back over to my brush, switch back over to black, and let's start talking about line quality again. So as you can see, thin, and then thick when I push harder. And this is really important when it comes to drawing and painting, but especially drawing. Your line quality will kind of determine the quality that your art looks like. So for example, let's say that we're drawing an eye. So I'm just gonna undo these lines. So if I'm drawing an eye, I'm gonna start by just drawing out my outline. And while I'm doing this, let's talk about the importance of the undo button. Whatever software you're in, there's gonna be an undo button and most likely there's gonna be hotkeys for it. And that's the beauty of drawing with digital is that you can quickly undo things. So you can draw a line and if you don't like it, you can undo it. So we'll just go ahead and draw that until we get the line the way we want it. And if we don't like it, we'll just undo it and redraw. You can just immediately click undo um, after you draw a line and it's just, it makes drawing so much better. So let's go ahead and continue drawing this. Draw the iris. So 
something like that, pupil. So we have our eye here. We'll even give it a nice eyelid. Now all the lines are kind of the same. They're, some of them are a little bit thinner, so these out here are a little bit thinner, and that's line quality. The thickness or the thinness of your line is what your line quality is. So when you're drawing, you might want thicker and thinner areas of line. So for example, on this eyelid, we might want a nice thin line like we have here, or if we were to add an eyebrow, we might wanna just do thin lines like this, and we get that by just not pushing so hard with our stylus on our tablet. Like that. But in other areas, we might want thicker lines. So for example, we might want a thicker line up here on this top part of the eyelid. So I can go ahead and just push a little bit harder and draw over that again, and just get a nice thick line. Or if we were doing eyelashes on this, we could get these nice thick eyelashes by pushing hard. Or we might also wanna do things like doing a thick line that turns into a thinner line. So on eyelashes, they actually tend to not be so fat and thick like this. They might be a little thick at the beginning, so we'll push a little bit harder at the beginning, and then at the end, we'll let off on our pressure to get a nice thin line. And as you can see, they start out a little bit thicker, and then they start to thin out. So that's why line quality is so important, is while you're drawing, there's gonna be thicker and thinner lines, and you really wanna pay attention to what's thicker and what is thinner, because it's going to change the way your drawings look. Now, going back to talking about how lines create shapes, I don't wanna to get too much into shapes right now, because that's gonna be the next lecture, but let's talk about it a little bit more. So we showed how we can connect lines like this and create a shape, and we can get all kinds of different things. So we can get a line that curves like that, and then we can connect it and curve it back that way something like that. And we can just connect things with lines. We're just, all we're using is lines at this point. We can even get swirly lines in there. We can connect those with straight lines to create kind of a scroll effect, right? And all of this, all of this is just simple line. So what I want you to do is I want you to take some time in whatever program you're using and whatever tablet you're using and just mess around. Try drawing because especially if you've never drawn with a tablet, it's going to take a little bit getting used to. So you want to make sure that you practice a lot with it. So try some scrolls like this. It's, it's fun. It's easy. Um, and you're just using some simple plain lines to connect everything. It doesn't have to look perfect. As you can see, like I might overshoot these two lines so they cross over each other. Don't get too worried about stuff like that. I just want you to get used to using your tablet and stylus and just drawing, drawing lines and creating shapes. So we could even do things like a curved line like this, curve it back up like that, maybe curve these out like that. Which, this brings me to my next point, which is line contrast. So what is line contrast? Well, I think of line contrast as basically lines that contrast. So for example, if I have a curved line right here, and then it goes straight, that's contrast. Contrast is anything that's kind of contrasting in opposites that are right next to each other. Or these lines right here, they curve in opposite directions. So if we curve a line that way, then we can curve the next line like this. And you'll find that when you're drawing, a lot of the times these contrasting lines will look really good. They'll look a lot better than just lines that are curving in the same direction like this. But if you can get these nice contrasting lines, it makes your drawings just have such a more dynamic feeling to them. So anytime you can get lines that are contrasting, so curved and then straight, or maybe it's going that direction, then it's going this direction, and then we get a curve, and then we get a curve going the other way. Um, anytime you can create those contrasting lines, go for it, because they're going to make your drawings look that much better. Let's go ahead and let's add a new layer, and I'll fill that in white. Then we'll switch back over to the brush. So now we have a nice, clean, new canvas. Now let's talk about contouring lines. We've already kind of been covering them throughout this lecture, but we didn't really say that there were contouring lines. So contouring lines are basically the lines that make up the silhouettes or the inner shapes of an object. So for example, when we're drawing the eye, these are all contouring lines. All the lines that make up the eye shape are contouring lines. So the outline of the eyelid, the circle of the iris, the pupil, this line that makes up the tear duct, our eyelid lines, um, the line that makes up the shape of our eyebrow. If we have any wrinkles down here, these can be contouring lines. Um, 
if we have the ledge of the eyelid right here, that's a contouring line. All of this is contouring lines. So even though these lines, like I said, might not exist in real life, they're contouring lines and you really want to know that they're there, even if it's only inside your head and you don't actually draw them. So let's have an example of some contouring lines. I want you to find an object around you and we're just going to draw the contouring lines of it. So for example, right now I have a pen in front of me and what we're gonna do is we're just going to draw the contouring lines of this. So I know you can't see it, but you know what a pen looks like, so it'll be fine. If you have a pen around you, grab one and I want you to draw the contouring lines of it. So let's go ahead and get started. So we have the clicker right here, which is just a rectangular shape. And then we have this part of the pen and as you can see, I'm not, I don't care too much if this looks amazing. I'm not going to go back and erase things or anything like that. I just want to get an understanding of what the contouring lines are. We get kind of this weird dippy thing there from the rubber part of the pen. And then we get the ball of the pen like that. And we also get this little clip piece that comes off like this. But those are all contouring lines. So there's no shading, there's nothing like that. It's just lines, just straight up lines that create up the contours of our drawing. So your assignment for this lecture is I want you to just find any simple object around you. It can be your keys, it can be a shoe, anything like that. And I want you to look at it and I want you to try to draw the contouring lines. So just look for those lines that either appear invisibly, but you know that there's still sort of a line there, or just look for the actual silhouette of the object and draw that in. Then you can go ahead and post that to the Q&A section of the course. And if you have any questions about this, make sure you post them in the Q&A section and we'll get to you and answer them and make sure that you understand the fundamentals of drawing. Thanks for watching this lecture and I'll see you in the next one.